Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to, or actually quite literally, on to the Nürburgring. I'm standing here now at T13 and this line over here is the start and finish line of every Nürburgring lap record. Now of course yesterday the Porsche GT3 was released with a very remarkable sub 7 minute lap time, but today we're not going to talk about lap times, it's just a coincidental that I'm standing here right now here. Today we're going to talk about the Nürburgring construction work, something that I tried to show you last week, but uh, everything was frozen, covered in snow and ice, we couldn't do it. It is too cold. The soil is just frozen and it's, well, it's impossible to work. But now, as you can see, weather is getting very good. Upcoming weekend, we even have predictions for 14 degrees, but let's not talk about the weather, let's talk about the construction works. Every single year during the winter break, it's nothing out of ordinary, it's not an unusual sight that we would see here, some uh, tractors, some plows, some uh, curbstones being renovated. We did like a very big, coverage of the construction works back in 2018. It looks a bit different from the last time that you saw it. Also last year from 2019 to 2020 where there were some small curbstones uh, refurbished I would say. So it's not much. And now here today we have something special for 2020. Now if you've been following the Nürburgring on social media and on their website you know what we're going to talk about and if not let's just go through the official media message while we go towards the construction works. So as we can see here on their website it says digital marshalling brings flag signals directly into the car. So we are going to by we the Nürburgring themselves are going to digitalize marshalling or digitalize almost the whole track. Does this mean that the track will be accessible in a set of Corsa? It already is. But in this case, we're talking actually about marshalling itself. And what does this mean? So in 2021, the Nürburgring will now test different systems here. Numerous cameras will bring the image directly to the new race control system. New software with artificial intelligence will help to recognize dangers more quickly. And we'll get to that in a bit. Let me show you this amazing massive plow here. Basically what is happening is that it digs one meter 30 into the ground and lays cables. Unfortunately the cable laying process we have already missed but let's go back to the actual press release. So digital marshalling, you probably already seen something like that on Formula One for example in Spa and other tracks where you have digital uh, so to say flag, so in, uh, instead of traditional person waving with a flag, you would see like a digital sign uh, showing that there is something happening. There's a yellow or a blue flag or a red flag or a safety car or virtual safety car. And yes, this would be an example of what uh, will be happening here. But there's actually more to that. It says new software with artificial intelligence will help to recognize dangers more quickly. Now, recognizing dangers, of course, you can say like, okay, oil spill or, or coolant spill, or it's probably also a politically correct way of saying crashes. If a car crashes, you definitely want to bring out yellow flag quickly to warn other cars, which are before that, because for them, it is a danger. Now, how it is going to work? That's a very good question, but I mean, uh, you have on your camera, you have uh, face recognition software, so you could focus immediately on your face. And that's been already here for many, many decades available. So um, to have a software that will recognize a car crash, that which is something out of ordinary or just like any anomaly, so would say, that would be not that difficult in that regard. The exact working of the system is still being worked on because the very important note here is that it is a test. So uh, this is something that you really need to understand. It is a test uh, because Nordschleife is 20.832 kilometers long. It's the longest track in the world. It's going to be very difficult. It took two years to build it, which was very significant, but nowadays uh, it's going to take a lot longer to digitalize it completely, to, to, layer, to lay the cables there, the system. And that's why right now we are talking only about the Döttinger Höhe. So they took 2.7 kilometer stretch. This is in miles. I don't know the calculation currently by heart. And this is going to be the test to test different systems and to see if it is actually working, if it actually makes sense. Now, why am I saying this? Because uh, some people were very cheerful, like, yes, awesome, Nürburgring is investing, which is, again, a massive good shout, because after last year of COVID, very tough year for the whole of the world, Nürburgring is investing, and this means that hopefully, well, 
first of all, the life of the Nordschleife will be prolonged. That is, uh, yeah, more races will be able to take place here. Tourist and Farten, industry pool as well. I'll get to those three points later on in a bit. Uh, they will still be able to take place because it will be safe. And the second point was that some people were saying like, oh, but this is only 2.7 kilometers on the main straight. How is that going to make any difference? Wow, why not the whole track? As explained, it is quite costly, quite difficult to do the whole track. So it is just a test and we will see. Now let's read down more to the, the actual message. It says, uh, with digital display panels, which also show flag signals, the officials can control what is happening on the track. In addition, the signals and important information are shown directly to the driver on the display in the cockpit. This is, now, this is very significant. So this means that basically the drivers will have an additional system either an additional external system, so extra screen that will show the messages, warning messages, hey, watch out, in the next corner you're gonna have yellow or maybe even like uh, some significant, um, let's say danger, let's call it that way, political correct, yes, slow down, and this will prevent lots of crashes. Like the, the biggest example would be uh, 2016 Nürburgring 24 hour race, when like dozens and dozens of cars crashed because uh, there was hail f falling out of the, the skies and um, yeah if you could have prevented that that would have been nice so direct messages to the driver systems this means that who knows maybe one day because nowadays you have different like so to say track coach systems track timing lap timing uh, ESC, TC, if you can link on the, all those systems that come already on factory cars, maybe one day on your, on your Porsche, on your AMG, on your whatever, Audi Sport, uh, you're gonna have actual system on your car linked to the communication system of the track. And when you go do a track day, that system will be interconnected and uh, you will have those warnings. So that is going to benefit a lot. That is very good. Now we're going to drive along the track and show you actually how long, where the construction work started. They started here, they finished at Marshall Post 188, which is just before the start of the main straight. But first, a couple of other interesting things that I wanted to tell you. In just under four weeks, the work on Döttinger uh, should be completed. After all, the first contactless TF rides of 2021 await on the first weekend of March. Now, I asked the question to the Nürburgring, asking like, well, for all the concerned people, because the, this question keeps popping up every single day on different uh, Nürburgring related groups. Like, hey, is Nürburgring going to be open? Is TF going to be open? Because we're still in the Corona time. We still have different, oh, the big plow is going to work. Let's go check that out. We're in the Corona time. We have uh, different, um, uh, we're still in extended lockdown in Germany. Will tourism party will take, take place? And the answer was quite simple. Last year, we also had lockdown and Teresa Farten is an individual activity without any contact, without any interaction with any other people. This means TF is safe, 6th of March, come over here if you can and allowed to make the trip. It's going to be awesome. I'm very much looking forward to that. And now let's check out how this will work. Ah, it's my taxi. Ready for hunting the blow? Why, well, hello there. If that isn't the most introverted taxi driver in the world. <laughs> By the way, I kind of got very excited with chasing the plow there. I forgot to mention a very important thing. The system will be tested in pretty much every possible circumstance. So, of course, most obvious are the races during industry pool and sometimes during Touristenfahrten. There will be probably some Marshall cars or etc. that will be equipped with that system. So... It will be tested everywhere, but you can obviously re uh, imagine that during races, it will be like the most easiest controlled environment to test along. And later on, as mentioned, who knows one day, this system might find its way to your car that you're gonna have on your, the casual street car, you're gonna have the warnings coming up. Like, hey, watch out, slow down. There is something coming up. So what's happening? Are they gonna do use the plow? No. No? Not possible. Oh. Not possible. So why are we chasing it? <laughs> try to overtake it. Ah, okay. Well, unfortunately, it's not possible to use it. I believe, if I understood correctly, that's because there is too much electricity on the ground exactly. with all the cables. Yeah, cables. So uh, they were doing some testing and there were already too many cables lying around to use the plow. So they're going to use different methods to do it. But this is the start of the construction works that was started two weeks ago. And what they're doing over here right now is the making uh, a hole on the other side so the camera will be able to install on that side 
because the cable was laid on the left side uh, for you right now is the right side but this is the left side because we're driving in the opposite direction the left side the outside side of, of the circuit and to connect cameras which are going to be on different position they are going to dig some holes and connect them to the cable system which is then on the outside of the circuit did i mention it correctly more or Should less we just hop out and take a look let's do it i think that's a better way of doing it so as mentioned previously the the cables are already laid here there is a hole dug so you can connect it to the other side i believe it's been already connected let's not fall in there i know it would make a nice video but let's not do it i mean there's only so much we can show oh it's having a wheel spin uh. So basically we just wanted to show you how it's done, more or less, not completely, because we're not gonna spend here the whole day showing it to you, I apologize for that. But uh, for some it may, it may be obvious that uh, you should camera, have cameras left and right for different reasons, but some people might say like, hey, you're only gonna have cable on one side, are you only gonna have cameras on the other side? What about the other side? The other side is covered as well, don't worry. So now let's proceed with our tour. What's very significant, remarkable and beautiful is that uh, I believe like last week when we were driving here, you could see that there were some works taking place, that the, the, the ground, the soil was kind of like dug up. But now, if you wouldn't know that construction uh, works were taking place, you wouldn't know anything about it. So it's being closed up very nicely. So you can see that here is also another opposite direction for the other camera. And I'm sure there's going to be a couple of more. Also, let's appreciate the moment that we're driving in the opposite direction for once. I wonder what's happening here. Ah, I guess they are digging now here as well for to the other side. This is how it's happening. Nice. So let's get to the end of the test area. Yes. So what are you looking forward to the most in 2021 season? Normal season, huh? Ah. As normal as possible. I'll give you a hint. Hopefully in two or three weeks. I'll give you a hint. What's there? Fancy pancakes. Yes. We need, we need to have some together, huh? Yes, we do. We absolutely do. So here's the, the area which wasn't paved. Uh-huh. Roman yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so here, as you can see, uh, oh, some birds. We actually just saw some birds flying above us, coming back after the winter break. That was cool. Can you go a bit more to the right? I'll just open the window slightly. So this is how it looks like right now. And what you saw before was how it looked like before, basically. So don't worry, everything will be nicely sealed up before the season starts, so Kevin Estrick can do his overtake in 2021. Which is, by the way, confirmed that he's going to be driving for Monte Racing together with Lars Kerr, Michael Christensen, and fourth driver, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, so, but here's the insert. So we'll have someone to cheer for. Hopefully the spectators will be allowed as well. Norschleife alongside, of course, because GP track was okay last year already. Tum, tum, tum. Nice. So that's basically, Pretty much it regarding the construction works of 2020 to 2021, and that's where the finish is at 100. Oh, that's 189. Yeah. So. Last time I oh yeah. 188. Yeah. So that should Came be. Me. Mm. So the finish is at 189 then. Ah. All we, right. We won't leave it going today. No. <laughs> you do have the wrong key again. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, I told you everything that I could possibly tell. I hope you guys are just as excited as I am, as we are, about the construction works, about the updates, about the investment in continuation of prolongation of the Norsch Life Alive and to everything, all the future things to come. Does this mean that the Norsch Life is going to be safe enough to drive Formula One? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, it's safe enough, but Formula One is going to come up with some other things like, yeah, no, maybe not. Maybe the TM, hmm, but it's not. Then some people are gonna complain like, yeah, but back in the 80s, the TM was a lot more fun. 
than, than it's going to be today. Anyway, as you can tell, I'm talking nonsense, so it's time to say goodbye. Bye. Uh, there is one thing, a bonus for people who have made it till the very end. Remember on the 1st and 2nd of January, I made a walk, the first lap in snow. And when I got here to Hohenrein, I told you like, hey, this actually was built in 1967, roughly something like, yeah, yeah. 67. Oh, I'm, I'm correct. Yes. Woohoo! Bonus points. Pancakes. He owes me pancakes. Uh, 1967, Hohenrein was built because by then cars were getting already way too fast. And back on the 2nd of January, I said like, oh no, everything's covered in ice and snow. I cannot show it to you. So underneath this layer of snow, there's actually old tarmac still from the 60s. Well, I guess it's something that uh, I'll have to show you at some other point. But now I can. So I actually already went. So here's how it looked like. Oh, you know what I want to show? The old tarmac from before 1960s. Look at that. So this is the old tarmac. So the track was going straight, all the way straight. And then I decided, you know what? This is too fast. So we're going to put a hole in the right chicane there. You can even still see the old Marshall post over here. That's so cool. Basically, thanks to a new digitalization, we don't need the old school stuff anymore.